You like hitting men? Is that it? Was it? I like playing the character of China where I hit men and it was kind of the great equalizer. It's just neat to me to have been able to go out and make my mark in uh, what I consider to mostly always be a male fraternity. Love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Wake up, wake up, wake up. We're sleeping. <laughs> We're staying in bed all damn day today. It's Sunday, right? <clears throat> Just fading up to this. Little windows. It's a beautiful Sunday. And guess what? Let's go make a little smoothie. Here I am in Redondo Beach, California, and I'm outside the apartment. Where China, famous professional wrestler China, passed away in April of 2016. I've looked up this uh, address many, many times. It's interesting that I'm finally, finally here. And it's a difficult video sort of to make because there's not much I can show you other than the building and talk about what happened and uh, where, where she's buried and where she's not buried. But China, very, very, very popular wrestler. Was born in Rochester, New York. She joined the Peace Corps. And then she was a, uh, she got really into physical fitness. And then, I didn't realize this, I didn't know about this. Killer Kowalski, famous wrestler, trained her. And then she became a pro wrestler. And the building where she passed away is right there. Normally I don't watch immediately what I have, uh, Taking footage of, but I just watched that back to make sure the sound's okay. And I realized it cut out a little bit at the beginning, but I said, hey, how's it going, everybody? But uh, sometimes when you're dealing with mics, sort of mics, things like that happen, especially, especially when there's heavy, heavy wind, which there is here. But this is the Delphi. This is the apartment building where China passed away. And it wasn't a suicide. It was an accidental overdose alcohol and prescription drugs. Now I'll tell you a little bit more about her life. Dubbed the ninth one of the world, China, whose real name was Joan Marie Lauer, changed the role of women in the world of professional wrestling. Her career highlights include being a founding member of the wrestling group D Generation X, being the only female to win the Intercontinental Championship. She was a reality TV star and she wrote a best-selling autobiography. In February of 1997, Lauer made her WWE debut as a bodyguard for pro wrestler Shawn Michaels and his team Triple H. She went on to fight against and beat male wrestlers. In 1999, she became the first woman to compete in the Royal Rumble match. A few months later, she beat Jeff Jarrett to become the first and only woman to hold the Intercontinental Championship. At the end of the year 2000, her contract with the WWE expired and she was not re-signed. When she left the WWE, Lauer had to stop using the name China, and she ventured out to Hollywood, where she went by the names China Doll and Joni Lauer. She appeared on Celebrity Boxing 2, and Lauer also had a relationship with former D-Generation X partner, Sean Waltman. At one point, the couple was engaged. However, they had many, many battles between the two of them that played out publicly on The Howard Stern Show and The Surreal Life. Uh, China became a fixture on those VH1 celebrity reality shows and she appeared on VH1's Celebrity Rehab. In 2011, she wrestled once more for total non-stop action but soon left the company. Now from her last video that she posted on the Sunday before she passed, I'm assuming that she had one of these corner apartments because she had two views. One of... Uh, Palos Verdes over there. That's it right over there. That's where the Lost Boys Cave is if you watch any of my other videos. So she had a view out that side from her bedroom window and she had a view that way. When she was remarking on whether or not there were surfers out that day. 
Let's check out the surfers and see if they're out there. Oh, they're out there. get started. <laughs> so it was one of these corner ones. I just not sure what floor. But I estimated probably roughly where those black curtains are. Uh, sorry, the canopies. Probably about that level. Because she was looking out that way. And looking out that way. But this here is her front entrance. And the call box for upstairs. And where she would have parked her car. Very, very tragic ending for China. Seemed very lonely and very, very, very troubled. So one of those corner ones on the right. So as I said, she had Valium, Oxycodone, alcohol in her system. Her manager found her after three days of not hearing from her or seeing any posts on social media, police were called and they found her in her bedroom on her bed. They did have a memorial service for China and it was at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center and she was cremated and her ashes were spread right around here somewhere. This is Redondo Beach, and they said that her ashes were put into the ocean right near her apartment. Probably right near her favorite place. So this is the beach, right in front of her apartment. Age 46, that's very, very young. And as I said, a very sad ending for China. There are a lot of women out there who want to feel strength and you know there are women beautiful women of all shapes and sizes and yeah. colors not the stereotypical what we think is you think beautiful you in our society. might represent the emerging woman? I think I do. Yeah. I think I am the emerging woman. I Maybe guess not that the emerging woman but an emerging woman that's had an opportunity to go out and strut her stuff. She's quite a personality. I remember listening to her a lot on Howard Stern and she was uh, too bad. It's very, it's a shame. China was very candid that during her childhood, she grew up in a home filled with alcoholism and domestic problems. She left home at the age of 16 and went to Spain before attending and eventually graduating from the University of Tampa in 1992 with a degree in Spanish literature. As I said, she joined the Peace Corps and then taught English in Costa Rica. Now her manager, Anthony Anzaldo, hadn't heard from her since she last tweeted on April 17th and decided to check on her. She was found by him on April 20th lying in her bed in her Redondo Beach apartment right there next to her cell phone, iPad, clothes, pillows, and toys. Her death was ruled the result of an accidental overdose, not suicide. And there is footage of her ashes being spread that is on YouTube. I've decided not to include that. It seemed a little too... Um, intrusive a ceremony like that to show I just want to let y'all to know to have a beautiful 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 day today and I'm sure I'll be posting more things as the day goes on because I'll have my friends here and we'll be doing cellos and bike rides and scenes and all that stuff so 
Anyway, love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Or sleep in. <laughs> or stay in bed all damn day today. It's Sunday, right? Um, love y'all. Peace. So that's the story of China. And right there, that's where she passed away. And right there, her beloved ocean is where she is now. I hope she's resting peacefully. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Was a cold night, but a colder morning. She warmed me up as the sun came down. Time takes without warning, leaves you lost in this northern town. There's a light across the water, across the water I will stay when the light fades. I dream of silence, I dream of dreams, the thrill of violence and gasoline. Dream is twisted, overblown, and I am lonely, but not alone. And there's a light across the water, across the water, I will stay.